right, she has a little bit on her skin. I'm ducking in front. There will be ducking in front. <laughs> and so I'm going to wipe her brows and stuff off. Do you have any allergies to aloe vera, eucalyptus? No. Latex, silicone, no. lavender. Um, so always ask your clients about allergies because knowing your kit is very important of what people could be allergic to. So I'm going to walk through her as though she is one of my clients. Check the kind of skin. I'm checking for pores. I'm checking for eyebrows, checking for facial hair, pigmentation, all of that. I asked about the allergies. So now I'm going to ask, um, does she, when she's exercising, uh, embarrassed, drinking alcohol, do you turn red in your face, chest, or neck? Face. Face, where in your face? Cheeks. Your cheeks. So that means I'm going to come in with my green color corrector and hit these areas. Okay, and hit this. How she turns red in the, in the cheeks, I want to counter that for later to where she looks good when I'm done with her, but when she drinks the alcohol, I don't want her to change. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to green correct here to counter any redness that may show up later. She's not super red right now, but that doesn't mean she won't be. All right, then I'm going to ask, um, do you get little beads of sweat on your upper lip, under your eyes, um, right here? The forehead muscles. Just your forehead? Mm -hmm. Is it kind of normal? Or is it really beaded a sweat? It can get pretty bad. Pretty bad? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to use, that tells me that I need to protect the makeup later. So I'm going to come along in here and use Skin Prep Pro when I do the skin. And the antiperspirant up there, okay? So I like to do the eyes first, so I'm going to jump into the eyes. So I am going to use some yellow corrector on her lid as a primer. This works to counter the little bit of gray purplishness that we see on her lids, as well as give me something for the shadow to stick to. Okay? All right, close your eyes. And I like to, she has a nice firm lift, so I'm not really lifting much. It's just habit to have my hand up here. If someone doesn't have firm skin, then I do a little bit of a tug to keep a nice smooth surface. And but then, everyone has a difference, so there's not perfect or imperfect. Okay, yeah. It's just different. So in her case, I don't really have to lift much because she's already pretty flat and she's not going to be fighting my brush. If you find that your brush is tugging and the skin's moving with it, yeah, do yeah. a little bit of firming by lifting upward. Don't pull this way, lift this okay. way. Okay? All right, I'm now going to take a buffing brush and buff out the excess product because I don't want any clumps of product that will grab my shadows and pack them in the wrong way. Also, I want to be able to blend, and if there's too much product, it'll grab the brush and the product and be too dark with spots and not have a nice even blend. Okay? So now, if I use glitter or anything like that and dark colors, they'll fall down here and stick to the skin because it's untreated skin. And then when I go to wipe it off, sometimes you have to rub, and that can cause puffiness, irritation. So I like to go in with loose setting powder. Open your eyes, look up. And I'm going to set it right on top of the skin. Is that called baking? This is not baking. I never knew it that way. Baking should not be done if you're not doing drag performance. And that is simply to catch product. Now, I'm going to determine what kind of shadow pattern and stuff she's got going on. She likes a little more bold colors, so I don't have to just stick to completely neutral colors. She's wearing burgundy and she likes my red, so I could actually give her a burgundy eye if she wanted. I can stick with browns. What kind of color scheme are you thinking? No, burgundy. You want burgundies? All right, so I'm going to use this palette. I'm going to have you hold that for me. This palette to do her eye makeup. I'm going to do her brow bow first with a neutral color that's close to her skin tone because I want to brighten this area but not make it clash with her. This is still skin. This is all dressing. Okay, so I'm going to come in and I'm packing it on the side of my brush pressing it in and packing it along here. That's my brow color. I make my clients hold things for me so this is not a rare occurrence. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to come in. I like to get my brow pop right here with a little bit of shimmer. Um, I like to lay it down before I start doing any blending. We're going to do inner lid this color. I always work oh side God, to side. So, so I pack the color onto the lid. I'm pressing it into place so it's nice and pigmented. 
I don't like to get my brushes wet while I'm still using them on one person, so I just use a clean cloth. Mm. Okay, now for her outer lid, I'm going to do a base of this color here, which is a little bit darker, and I'm using her pupil as like her center divide right here. And then I'm going to take this color over that. All right, so now I'm picking up this one on a blending brush, and I'm going to hit her crease. Mm -hmm. And I do a rounding and up. Okay, now, when people's eyes close, the, everything is different, especially if you're doing any lifting. The eye looks different when it's closed. So I'm going to do a basic blend, and then I want her to look at me because I want to see where I need to contour and shape her eye. Okay, she has a lot of space here, and if I don't bring this higher, it's going to look like she has a tiny lid and a giant space, and we want her to just have a more proportionate eye. So I'm going to bring more shadow into here to help contour and shape and give some more control because I want to balance out her features and eyes to where they just look really pretty. All right, open. See how it changes? Mm -hmm. Just you a little bit. I yeah, just blended good. it, but it helps contour and shape and it gives more of a it's balanced fast. appearance to her eye. Mm -hmm. Practice, baby. It's really Practice. Like an hour to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's practice, baby. So I always want to leave some space up here because this is size and dimension. She already has a lot of size, so I don't need to leave a ton of it. It's more about bringing proportion to where she looks like she has a larger lid and a more proportionate crease because she has more space up here, which is great for designer styles, but for overall wearing, you want a little more create balance and symmetry. Everything in makeup is about creating balance. All right, so now I've given my base color for her crease. Now I'm gonna do a little more contouring, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of a deeper color. And I'm just doing it along where I want her crease to be. This is where I'm actually contouring with color. All right, open look at me. Mm -hmm. So it shows and changes definition a little bit. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that color. And I want to just do a deeper amount right here. Like Open. that whole like. See, just to cut her a oh little yeah. more. I'm window contouring. Washing, like a little more window washing because this isn't really blending. This is contouring mm -hmm. with color. So it's not eyeshadow isn't about what colors you use. It's the light and the darks you use and where you place them to create shape and balance. And. Uh, undertone is important as well, but mostly I use light colors to make things look bigger, dark colors to push things in, make things look smaller, shape and contour. So I am creating the illusion of a higher crease to help balance out her eyes. So if I bring her crease up just a little higher, it gives the yeah. illusion of a much larger lid. Alright, well, so now I that I'm done with my blending, I'm going to come in and brighten up my shimmer areas. because. Blending does remove some of the shimmers, and I like to go in and do a little bit of a pack. I want to give her a little bit lighter on her inner eye here, because I like this red, but I want to give size. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of this gold, mm -hmm. and I'm just doing it over her pupil. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's about size. It's creating size because I'm not doing enough of it to change the colors really. I'm just giving a light point. I'm highlighting her eyes to create size. Ooh. Okay, so now I'm done with the eyeshadow portion of my makeup. Keep your eyes closed. And then I just dust away all my fallout. Look up. Okay. Look up. This is the Maron Skin Prep Pro. I'm going to use this on her 
forehead just a little bit. Is there an alternative to the skin prep pro that I we don't have? know. Um, what about in our kits? No. Okay. I don't love you guys that much. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you don't pay enough to get my whole kit. Right. <laughs> so I'm just doing that right along her hairline. What about Max? I don't want to do it everywhere just because it does change the texture of the skin. Yeah. Like this is an antiperspirant. Oh. There's a difference. And you're putting it This isn't a primer. This is only where she gets beads of sweat. Oh, so you're not, and you wouldn't do it here. I'm not going to do it anywhere it. but where they get beads okay. of sweat. So it's very few people do you get it, and you only put it where it is because it changes the texture of the skin. It is an astringent and an antiperspirant, so it tightens and dries the skin, which can change the texture down in here. So use carefully and sparingly. You can kind of feel it. Uh-huh. Mm. And I'm going to hydrate. Okay, so I am just hydrating and getting her all hydrated. Because hydrated skin is happy skin. It's plump. It works better for overall application. So you want to make sure your clients are drinking water that they're exfoliating, hydrating, because it's a partnership. You can't do beautiful natural skin if they ain't taking care of it. You can do heavy fucking foundation, but that's a different story. But if you have good skin, you can wear a very minimalist and do that natural bare face, um, which is hard to do. You don't really have a lot of blemishes and pores and stuff, so I don't really need to do any primer. She's pretty smooth and even. I've hydrated her. I am going to use a little bit of the MAC Fix Plus just to add some hydration and a little bit of smoothing effect because it does prime a little bit. All right, close your eyes, relax, and feel really wet. One, two, three. I'm running out. My order is not here yet. <laughs> All right, so she is now prepped. This means I'm going to go in and start doing the skin prepping part. Because we've prepared the surface and now we, but it's actually, you did a lot. Alright, I'm so, I want to move her into the natural light so mm -hmm. I get a more clear idea of her skin. If you don't have natural light, you're going to have lights and stuff like that. Okay, so normally we are going to color match to her collarbone right here. People who are wearing high outfits that are not going to be changing into low outfits, you can just do like their neck or their cheek. Um, because it's staying covered. But if anyone is wearing anything that is going to actually show this area, you want them to match from here up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's where I want to color match her. I don't want to color match her here. I don't want to do here. I don't want to do here. Okay, if I do here, we get sun damage in this area. If I do here, it's usually sheltered from the, the sun by the face and the chest. Face is usually protected by sunscreen, moisturizers with sunscreen, makeup. Makeup has natural sunscreen in it because of all the products, so you want to make sure you're doing right here so they're even from here up because no floating heads. So I'm going to come in with a foundation that may be her color. This is going to be a little too dark for her, so I put it there. See, that's too dark, so then I can jump a little bit lighter. Okay, that's a little too, that's not light enough, and then we're like, oh, there. So she's lighter than that palette. Notice that I am comfortably leaving spots all over her. That I'm not really concerned that I didn't get it on the first try. Because you don't have to get it on the first try. So if you don't get it right the first go, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Because you can keep trying. Alright, that's a little closer. Mm -hmm. It's still dark though. It's still a touch dark. That means I'm probably going to have to mix it with a little bit of a lighter foundation. That's a little too light, but if I mix those two together, we'll get to the right level. I also think that's a little too pink for her. Yeah. She's a little more yellow. So I would want to mix this with a little bit of yellow corrector. All right, so if I mix these two, it may lighten her to the level I want it to be. Okay, so now we have her foundation match. So I want to mix some of this into my green for her cheeks and make it like a sickly kind of green color without being full green and then I have her under eye correction of the yellow and her face right there so I have my colors on my hand which is my palette yeah. okay all right so under eye correction 
have her look up and then I'm going to come in with the yellow because she has purpley tones and I'm going to bring it all the way to her lower lash line and just where I see purple pigmentation I'm not going to try to shape out her eye in a weird way and I do put it on a little heavy but that's because I like to stain the skin and so most of it is going to be wiped off but I use a lot of pigment and let it sit because I think it works. I don't know. Could be wrong, but I it feel like it works. works. I'm going to pick up the green corrector and hit her cheeks um, where she is tur turns red. You don't turn red up here, do you? Um, or your nose? It's, it's mostly to, the nose, I think. Just yeah. Okay, so I'm going to run a little bit of product there as well. I'm going to let all of that kind of sit for a minute. Because what I'm doing is letting it stain her because I'm going to remove most of that product mm -hmm. because I don't want heavy application. If I'm not doing heavy a uh, uh, light application, I can do less product to get the same effect. But in this case, I'm going to take almost all of it off. All right. So once I feel that it has soaked an appropriate amount of time, I'm going to come in with a buffing brush and buff most of it into the skin most of it off. See, almost all the product's gone now, but the pigment has stayed. Mm -hmm. And that's why I do that, because I want the pigment to do its job. I don't necessarily need a ton of product, because most of my, look up, most of my clients prefer to have um, a very sheer natural face. I prefer mm -hmm. to use this guy, because it saves me time. Is that the, like, square brush? This is a contour brush. Uh, and I use it, and basically all I'm doing is moving the product over the skin, and then I buff it in. So it's a two-part process. This is not buffing. This is moving it on the skin. And it moves it quicker than if I were to use the buffing brush to try to do the whole phase. So it's me being sheer laziness. You kick it down toward her neck, too. If I need to. Lazy or smart? <laughs> eh. Lazy people are always clever because we're lazy. It's not because we're smart. It's because we're lazy so we get smart so we don't exactly. have to work hard. Exactly. You get, if you get ten lazy people to figure out, we would fix all of the world's problems just because we want it done and over with. Yeah. That's so true. So if I need to blend, I'm going to bring it down. Uh, if my color match is wrong, you'll notice. If the color matches right, then I can usually stop right around here. So, the product left on my hand, see, I did apply to her whole face and I still have this much left over. I mean, I'm going to save that for later because I may need it for touch-ups just in case she like cried all over me or something. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to come in with this brush and start blending. And I remove a lot of product. But that's okay. I am buffing in to the it right still looks level. Like she has like a nice finish though. Mm -hmm. And that's what you why buffing is so important because it removes any streaks and makes sure I get it into all the nooks and crannies. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Picks up the excess product. We get the underside of the nose. You also want to make sure you're picking up the excess product because if she doesn't need a ton of foundation, you don't need to leave a ton of foundation on. So I occasionally clean it out so it's dry. So we're going to pick up more product. So everyone has a different preference of how they want their foundation to look. Mm -hmm. So look up. So once I get it mostly blended, they're still damp. I haven't set them with powder. So I let them know they're going to look a little sweaty. And a little dewy. But I want them to look and let me know if they want more coverage. So I spin them towards the mirror. And I have them check their color match and their coverage. Some people go, oh, I would like more coverage, oh, blah, 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 blah. They have blemishes you want to further cover. You don't necessarily have to reapply to the whole face. They go, oh, I have a little more. You just apply in those areas. You don't have to do heavy everywhere. You can do sheer and then do heavier spot coverage. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to set a little bit of product, just a little bit on the brush, and work that into the skin. Okay. 
I don't go under the eyes right now. I just do the face. She's very courteous. She moves her face. Now, once I feel like I have it on, I slide my brush. Anywhere where I feel like there's some hesitation, it means there's still a little moisture, I come back in with my powder. This way, I'm not over powdering or under powdering her. Oily skin people, you can set a little more in this area if they have trouble in their nose. But over powdered can make people look very dry, but it's necessary for extended wear. But you don't want to over powder just because you want it to last all day, but you don't want to under powder either. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to do her under eye powdering. I'm going to have her open her eyes, look up here, see the creases? I'm buffing those out. Okay keep looking up. Again, all creases need to be blended out before you set with powder. Like wrinkles. They will create wrinkles. We're going to go ahead and do her brows, her liner, and her under shadow. Okay? I'm going to do her eyebrows. I'm going to have her close her eyes relax. I want her eyebrows in a natural shape. And then I like to do a little bit of an under stroke. With eyebrows, I want to choose a color that is one to two shades lighter than her head hair. She doesn't have much hair, so I can use a color about the same shade to get an overall eyebrow. If you use a darker shade or sometimes the same shade, it will make her look like Groucho Marx, like too dark of eyebrow. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do that. But I, so now I'm switching to a slightly darker to hit into shape out. Um, areas where she has less hair. So in the areas where she had hair, we do a lighter tone, a little bit darker in the areas where she doesn't, so we can create some balance. I'm not a big fan of the ombre, like the naked brow where it looks no. like nothing into dark. Some people are. If that's what they want, then that's what you do. Okay, I'm going to have her look at her eyebrows and then we modify it based on what she likes. Because mm -hmm. that's how it works. Yeah? Because mm -hmm. I can go darker if you like. Because mm -hmm. no matter what you do, you are their makeup artist. You're doing what they want. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may try to talk them out of some bad decisions, but basically it comes down to it, you are working for them. We are going to do a little something for size. I'm going to take a shimmer light color, look up, and do this on her inner waterline so it catches the light it's going to make help with size and powder likes to hang out all day on your waterline all right so i'm going to do a black outer waterline and then smudge some of the red underneath so again i'm using liner brush and i like to use powder for the waterline because it stays all other stuff melts off little tiny shadow brush for a smudger and I'm going to pick up this right here turn this way just a little bit look up honest, all of my fallout and you just get there This is more stylized stuff that I like on people. It doesn't mean your client is going to want to do it and it's not unnecessary. It's just I wanted to do a little bit of a red tone in here. Red is very tricky around the eyes. If you don't do it right, it makes them look like they've been crying. So <laughs> notice I didn't do red on her waterline because then she looked like she'd been crying all day. You don't want that. Liner wise, some people want wings, some don't. Every eye is different. Some can do really extended wings, some can do little baby wings, some can't do any wings. It all just depends. Clients will ask for all different types and styles. So close your eyes. I'm going to make sure we have nice smoothness. Now I don't want to do from where the two lids meet and come up because that's going to give her like this hook. I am 
going to come in just a little bit and set her wing. Ah, it's probably going to be a little too flat for her, but that'll work. Well, it's usually where the natural hairs end, come slightly in and then set your angle. It just depends on the eye. We're doing a little more dramatic of a wing on her. Close. Most of my clients just do little baby wings. But very rarely do I do red on people either, so I'm the only person that allows me to do crazy stuff. All right, look at me. This is a more, it's a little more than a classic wing, but it's not a full jumbo wing, okay? But the ideal is skinny to thick with a little flick. No matter how thick or how big, you have to do thin to thick. The thicker you are here, the thicker it comes in, but it's always skinny to thick because that is going to lengthen and cat eye them. If you're trying to shorten and round, you do the same thickness across, okay? So we're gonna make sure she's fully lined to the inside, but I don't do it from the top. I have her look up over this way and I hit that water line right there. So then she looks fully lined, mm -hmm. but it's not gonna be thick. Up that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Let's hold on. So we are going to measure with her eyes closed. We're not going to come all the way in. We're going to come out just a little bit to where her natural hair start thickening along the lash line itself. And where her natural lash is in, that's where I trim. Pick up my glue and apply that. All right, and here's for the spiel. When I tell you to close your eyes, you keep them closed. Do not open them until otherwise instructed. If you do, I will hit you. <laughs> Once I do tell you to open your eyes, there may be some stickage. I am notorious for gluing my clients together. <laughs> this is what I tell my clients. I'm not making up a new spiel for you guys. No, okay, so if you are stuck together, it's not going to hurt you. It's just going to feel really weird while I peel you apart. Once they are apart, it may feel like a little gummy or tacky and a little sticky gluey. That is okay because that just means I need to put mascara on, okay? Once the mascara is on, it will feel normal. However, it may take you anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour to adjust to the fact that you have lashes on. Your eyes may feel heavy and droopy, or you may see them from the corner of your eye and be like, ah, what's that? Okay? But most people adjust to it within 10, 15 minutes. And yes, I do hit my clients. Gentle love taps on the forehead. Also, a trick, if someone starts tearing up on you, if you thunk them lightly in the middle of the forehead, they stop tearing up because it distracts them. If their eyeballs are going back and forth while you're trying to do eyeliner, have them do sign language in their lap with their hands. They will focus on trying to do sign language in their lap with their hands. Never blow on your lashes. Lashes go on the lash line, not on the lid. They are never applied to the lid. All right, open real quick. All right, and close. Gentle close like you're sleeping. Okay. The thicker the lash band, the more they want to kind of stick away from the face. Relax like you're sleeping. You keep tensing up on me. This eye is going to be stuck together. Just, just a warning. Open real quick. And close. Gentle. Yep. Okay, while your eyes are closed, you will feel me touching your face. That is because I'm doing contour and stuff, okay? 
So keep your eyes closed. I'm going to do her cheekbones. I do not do downward. That lengthens and gaunts the face. I want to lift and thin the face. So I'm going to lift her cheekbones by coming in a more this way and go with a little flip at the end to help lift. I have no idea how dark that side is. I couldn't see. There was a camera person in the way. And, and tilt. Whoop, no, that was her. Are... Tilt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it looks um, a little bit darker than On that side? side. That side or that side? That side. Okay, was, I thought sorry, so. Sorry, that side. Uh, yeah, I thought so. But I mean, yeah. Okay. It still looks bad. And there. tilt. Thank you. Oh, yes, much too dark. <laughs> Don't come up unless you want to shorten the face. Come up underneath. That's why I'm having her tilt so her jawline pops out. So I can see where to place shadow. Because you're creating the illusion of intensified shadow. Not actually trying to put makeup on the face. And here we go. Her forehead is good. We are going to do the tip of her nose just a little bit to balance her out with up here. Not everyone has to have the same nose. I'm just adding a little bit of balance. Cheyenne has a good nose. I'm just balancing her features. I'm not trying to change her ethnicity or change who she is. She doesn't really need any other contouring. She, her nose and her cheekbones and her jawline were pretty much all she needs. She has a nice face. It's pretty oval. I like to go in and do a touch of bronzer as a transition from contour into blush. So I, again, I'm using the same palette. It's a shadow palette. I don't like to use uh, most bronzers and contours because they're not quite pigmented enough. Mm -hmm. Eyeshadow lets you play with more stuff. So I use it from the contour line upwards to round the cheeks and to give some transition of color. I don't use bronzer underneath the cheekbones. Bronzer is cheekbones up, contour is to minimize. Bronzer simply adds color, it does not contour her. It's to give a sun kissed look, and that is all. blush I'm going to use a tone for her skin she is a warm tone so these are my warm tones I may throw a little bit of this one which is a little cool but it's a little more neutral cool if I want to brighten her up but I think we're good with just this blush what do you think about highlight when do you use it uh, I use it after blush uh -huh. and it is strategically placed for their face it's not just everyone yeah, gets highlight like, it's just highlight artist. yeah I wouldn't highlight her nose. We wouldn't give a nose dot because she's a little more rounder in the nose tip, so we're not going to add focus here. We don't really need to highlight her lips. She has nice full lips, so we might give her some cheekbones and a little bit of a brow pop to give her a little more of an arch, and that's pretty much all the highlighting. That's where sponges come in as erasers. Also, powder over powder blends a lot easier than powder over damp skin. I'm just going to do a gold tone highlight here. I don't bring it past here because that will distort the shape of her face. I just want to add focus to her cheekbones. So a little bit of that. Everything in makeup should be blended even when you are trying to be dramatic. Okay, and just a little bit in your mouth. Perfect. This is a lip color that is basically her natural lip color, just a little darker, so we're going to have some intensity, but we're still going to stay within that neutral realm so she looks like more natural lips and bold eyes. If you do bold lips and bold eyes, it causes conflict of where focal points are, so in this case, we can just give her a nice more neutral lip. Her lips are still going to look gorgeous, but her eyes become our focal point. Everything with you do in makeup is about creating focal points and focus. She looks pretty. She is pretty. It's easy to do makeup on pretty people. Alright. 
Do you like a Cupid's bow or no Cupid's bow? I normally do. <clears throat> then we get rid of it. We are going to try to open your eyes. And we have sticking. I told her we would. So. It's not as stuck together as they make it appear. But clients immediately feel resistance. And go, my eyes stuck together. And then they lock down. And you have to like pull it apart. Even though it's not that glued. But look straight up. We're going to make sure we have no separation. Okay, this is where I stress caution. Because if you come at someone with tweezers to separate their lashes, oh, please God, be careful. And this is why I don't use needle nose ones. And there you go. Alright, my preferred is the Maybelline. Okay, I get one fully covered in mascara. Alright, head here, eyes down. Don't close, just look down. And I'm going to come up root to tip and blend her natural lashes up. Notice I didn't do mascara before the lashes. No, yeah. This way they blend more naturally together and you don't have two sets of lashes. You have mm. one set. Keep looking down. I didn't tell you you could look up. <laughs> Fan for a second and look up here. And then if they like lower lash mascara, you're going to hit the tips of their lashes down here. Some people hate lower lash mascara, so do not assume everyone likes it. Keep looking up. And if you notice, I wiped the handle of my mascara wand so I didn't accidentally leave prints on the nose and stuff. Keep looking up. I'm going to take my clean wand and come up and declump. And yeah, look down. Make sure I get any back close. Alright, stay. Alright, you may look normal. I'm going to come in with a Q-tip and clean up any damage I did with my mascara. Look up. So, this is where we do the big reveal. Yay. One, two, three, close your eyes. I'll spin you. Alright. Aww. I like that because normally when I do highlight, like I'll do too much, but you're right, like it really makes a difference just putting it for mm -hmm. your face shape. Right, if each person mm -hmm. does it strategically, strategically. Mm -hmm. yeah. because every face is different, mm -hmm. it's a battleground. Your battleground of a face. All right. That is a full demo. Mm -hmm. Only difference between her and like a client would be choices of colors. Um, but again, it's whatever the client wants, whatever works with them. All right, get on my chair. <laughs>